Hi, Floss Tube friends. Welcome to my annual Floss Tube by the Christmas Tree episode. I do this every year for like, I don't know, maybe the past five years, four, I don't know. But I love it. And it's a chance to see my Christmas tree. Um, that's it right there. It is full of ornaments and um, they're from, well, they go way back. Some of them are gifts. Um, some of them are handmade by friends. And um, I mean, like I said, some of them belong to my grandparents, which is that that pine cone right there. <laughs> Silver pine cone. That is probably about 100 years old. And it's one of two on here that I know that belong to my grandparents. So that's kind of cool, right? So... Anyway, I hope you all had a wonderful Thanksgiving, and um, we had Thanksgiving at our house. I, we hosted, and it turned out really well. It was very, it was a lot of hustle and bustle, but um, luckily I had a lot of help, and I didn't even have to cook the turkey. So um, my niece's husband um, cooked it and brought it. So it was just really nice. <laughs> I just, I just had to do some side dishes and desserts and um, drinks and put out some appetizers and have my house open. So it was nice though. It was a really nice day and turned out really good. So I hope yours was good as well. The next day, the day after Thanksgiving is the day that Mark and I like to decorate. And yeah, we don't, hit, it's just the two of us. And um, we still like to do the whole thing, as you can see. There's our Christmas tree, and outdoor lights are a necessity because of the neighborhood we live in. And I know I've told this story before and told you why. We have an annual event. <clears throat> it's usually usually the Sunday before the Sunday before Christmas. So this time it's it's this Sunday the seventeenth. It's called the Night of Lights for our subdivision. We have a very large subdivision. Um, and it's unbelievable how many people cooperate to decorate their houses for this event. That On that particular night, we put out luminaries, which are the candles in the white bags on the curb. So the idea is to have all the streets lined. And for the most part, I would say about 95% of people um, take part. And I know for other, for various reasons, people don't. And, you know, and it's understandable. And it's, like I said, it's a large subdivision and, you know, not everybody does Christmas and not everybody is here at this time of the year. So, you know, um, but it's a good turnout, all the proceeds and it's donations only that one night. And every bit, every cent goes to charities, goes to a special cause. And there are two very special causes this year, and I'm very happy we get to vote on those. And um, and there are people that deserve it and need it. And um, I'm just hoping that a lot of people show up that night and that the rain holds off. Because right now they're showing rain for Sunday, and so I know that's a long way off. Today's Monday, so you never know. Um, so that's the excitement. The the, the little little bit of a drawback to this whole thing is that people have already started coming through our neighborhood because most people have decorated already. Um, we do medium decorating. I'm, you know, I it, we don't go crazy. We don't have professional lights or anything like that. Mark goes out there and puts lights on the shrubs and around the front door and um, puts a couple projectors, which I love. Those are my favorite things. <laughs> and um, oh, it, it's, it, it gets very busy. It gets very trafficy, And the most, most of the traffic will be next week. So it'll be the week, you know, the week leading up to Christmas will be, we'll see the most cars. So, but, it, you know, it's exciting. And I know, I know that's just part of it. And we just have to deal with it. And I try my best. So, um, so that's what's going on in the world of this place right here. So, um, that is our decorating and, um, I have been stitching. I've been doing 
quite a bit, I guess. And I'll show you. I'll start with whips. And um, I don't know. I just felt like starting something Christmas, even though I have decided that cross-stitch-wise, I, I have enough Christmas. I've got lots of cross-stitch for Christmas. And I know, I mean, to some of you, it might not be a lot, but it is, it's a lot. But I decided that for some reason, I just wanted to start this. And it, it is Sugar Stitches. Um, it's the Holiday Cheer series. This is number three. It's the Gingerbread House. So I just started it. And it's on this really beautiful even weave. It's called the actual even weave. It's the color Gingerbread. gingerbread. And I am having a hard time sticking that needle through this. I think it's 32 count, but it's acting to me more like 40 or maybe 36. It's a very tight weave. As you can tell, that's all I've done so far, which it just makes it a little bit of a challenge. And I don't really know why, because I made the first, this is one I made a couple years ago. And um, I didn't have any problems with the fabric. I don't know what it is. I don't, I'm using a really tiny needle. I think it's a little petite needle. And it's still, it's really hard to jam that needle through this fabric. I don't, I don't know. I'll keep trying though. Have you ever almost resorted to using a sewing needle in your cross stitch? I don't know, because of the fabric? <clears throat> Sometimes I feel like I need to do that. Next up, I worked on Drawn Thread. It's Apple, Boss Apple Blossom Sampler. And this is the one I did a total thread conversion to because I did not want to use silk. Um, I'm doing it on banding. I think it's 28 count. It's very, yeah, it's 28 count. And it is my own conversion. I did the best I could to, to kind of um, keep the colors similar. I know that the letters are very, very uh, subtle against this fabric, but it's okay. In fact, I like it. So, there it is so far. I'm enjoying that one to get that one done in 24. Also, I did um, Tulips Praise. It's by Gracewood Stitches, designed by Kathy Bungard. And this picture is pretty, but it, I don't think it does it total justice. This is such a big, I've been working on this for so long. It is a big project. But, I mean, when you look at look how pretty it is. I know I have a thread there. It's okay. So there it is. I hope to get this one done um, in 24. I would love to get this one done because I've been working on it for a really long time. Also, Quaker Diamonds by Rosewood Manor. Another one that I did, I didn't do it, but I'm using a total conversion. It's charted for their silks, and I did not get those. So, um, <clears throat> Sandy B. Stitcher shared a conversion with me that's all over dyed, and I think it's really nice. So there it is. I'm not going to take it off the frame. Um, my plan is, this is the very bottom of the piece. Uh, my plan is to just start going upwards, getting that bottom part done and just start rolling it to, toward the top. So um, I love it. I'm doing this on, um, I think it's 32 counts. It's an R&R &R fabric, and I think it's called flax. I love this fabric. I wish I had a ton of it. I can't find any more of it. Um, next, I worked on Blackbird Designs, and this is um, the Garden Series, Garden Club Series, and it's Basket of Cherries. So cute. I don't know what this fabric is, and I really wish I did. It's so pretty. I 
I, I need to figure it out. It's a 32 count. I know that. Um, even wave. But so far, that's what it looks like. I love this. I know we've seen so many people do, working on this one. But every time I saw it, I thought, oh, that's just so pretty. And this is a good one for summer because I have said in the past that um, <clears throat> I don't have enough things to put out in the summer. So I got to stop stitching Christmas and work on some summer things. Here's one that I could put out in the summer. <laughs> Stitchy Stars, and it's by um, Lori Holt of Be My Bonnet. So cute. I'm doing it in the uh, call four. And this one is done on Salted Caramel uh, Even Weave by Luminous Fiber Arts. Started in the middle, so I'm working my way downward, and then I'll go back up. I did, I'm doing a lot of the white on this one. I worked on this on Stitch Day with my friends, and um, I had good light, so um, I, I was hoping to get all the white done, but that's okay. So that is what I have worked on, stitching-wise. I've done some other things. Um, one of the things I did was I made my sister a beaded star. And I know I showed one um, several years ago. I made one for um, our son and daughter-in-law, and I did it in red. And this one is green. It's It turned out so pretty. I just think I have to make one for me. I'm going to put a picture of it right here. And so I hope you like that. It took a long time. It <laughs> it calls for like, I don't know, 2,000 beads. I'm not sure. I I don't know. But it, it's just a lot. It's, it's, but it, it is really nice. It's kind of um, like cross stitch in that it's kind of therapeutic because the, what, cause the stitch you use for the beads is a peyote stitch. And it just all fits together so nice when you use Delica beads. It's so cute. So um, that's the other thing I did. So we had our stitch day with my friends group um, that we've had for a long time. And I, we, like, we decided not to buy each other presents except, except to, for a small present to give. And we do this a lot at Christmas time. And I made fabric boxes. And I'm gonna, I made a little bit of a video about it because I knew that I wasn't gonna, they weren't gonna be around when I did this video. So before I gave them away last Saturday, I made a little video. So I'm gonna insert that right here and show you what they look like. Okay, so these are the little gifts that I made for my stitch group. This is the group of ladies called Sisters and Stitches. And we've been meeting up for about, probably about 10 years. We meet up monthly at a local, well, it's a community center that's centrally located for all of us. So um, on, at Christmas, we tend to do little goodie bags or stuff that we made each other. There, you know, people make ornaments and little things like that. And so I decided to, um, I like to sew. And so I, I wanted to do an easy sewing project. And these were really easy. Um, they're little fabric boxes in the way that they're constructed you get little little pockets in them so that you know if you use if you're highlighting your pattern or using a um a pencil to do it you can put that in there you put your scissors in as i just did see what goes in here i don't know warts i don't know <laughs> so um this is a really cool easy project it requires two pieces of fabric 11 by 11 and some interfacing same size and buttons that's it so all these buttons i found in my stash which is for me amazing especially that one because it matched and um that was the hardest part was sewing the buttons on by hand that was it the interfacing was very tough it was very hard to get that sharp needle through even though it was sharp i'm going to show you how it's going to look um i put a few little things in some little ornaments um and a notepad candy so that's that's going to be my gift this was a lot of fun this you could do one of these like i said in a couple of hours i think it would only take so um i hope you enjoyed seeing these and ray b who's asleep in 
the basket. So you can barely see her, but there she is. And um, I'll put the link below. So if you want to make these, you can. So that is the gift I made for friends. And, you know, it, it really was easy. I'm going to put the pattern link below. It's a YouTube video. It's not what you would think. And, you know, they were saying, well, how did that go together? How did the pockets form? It's almost origami-like to me, the way you have to fold it and sew it. So um, I'll put that link below in case you want to work on that as well. I mean, two pieces of fabric, 11 by 11, and um, one, you know, it, uh, contrasting fabrics, like one for the inside, one for the outside, and a piece of heavyweight interfacing. And they also say to use lightweight interfacing on one side, and I don't know if that's necessary. Well, if you decide to make them, you decide for yourself and see what you think. I'm bending over, I'm leaning. I have a totally different setup when I do these. So, so anyway, I hope you enjoyed seeing that. It was, uh, everybody seemed to like them. And I don't, for me, it was just fun. And, you know, it was very inexpensive, very, you know, it wasn't over the top. And it was a fun project. So, and I would, man, I would go and make one for me, I think. So, um, I also did a spur of the moment project. I saw this project on Instagram as a very short reel and I saved it from last year and went back and looked at it and decided to make, make one myself. So I made one. It is a little wreath. I had some, I did not have any muslin fabric but I had some just like a natural fabric and I decided that would be okay because this is embroidery and what you do is you put a uh, ring of twine in, on first stretch your fabric onto the hoop this is a three inch I believe I think be four I don't know but you and then you sew the twine on and then you embroider over it see it turned out so cute I cannot believe it I am going to make more of these definitely um, I did my own thing I went back and looked at the video that I originally saw of how to make these and she did such a neat job of um, embroidery and mine is okay <laughs> I think I would I would work on perfecting that but and then I just had some beads that I I mean from a long time ago and I just used those I thought that was pretty there's a little bit of a shine and that's it then I put a backing on it it's just a piece of comic book board covered by fabric nothing else and I did the thing where you sew around pull it tight glue it on with Aileen's tacky glue and there it is all it needs is a hanger and it's gonna go on the tree there it is so that was a lot of fun and it was a very very um not a real involved I've got I got this done in one day I think you know and you have to, you have to wait for things to dry because the, this fabric is glued onto the inside of the hoop that takes a little while and then the this backing gets glued on and of course you got to wait till it dries so let's say it's a two-day project i don't know so there it is so many cool handmade things i'll tell you what we got some at stitch day we got some other handmade things and i want to show you some of the things that people made for me um, a little crocheted star. I love crochet, but look how tiny that is. I have never done anything like that. It's got a little bit of a glitter in it. So that's going to go on the tree as well. Um, Sheila, my sister, made us all snowmen. Look at 
the sky. Look, look. She made these out of palm clay. <laughs> Isn't that cute? I have a perfect place for him. He goes up with my decorations. It's so cute. And another one that we got was It's so cozy and warm, and I'm always cold. And it has a magnet closure. Did you hear it? It is so soft. So it's so special to get something that's handmade. I know not everybody can do that, but what a nice gift. What, what nice gifts. It's just wonderful. Just nice Ah, just a nice time. So, um, we had a drawing last time. I'm going to look for my, the, oh, there it is right there. It was for Waxy Moon De Designs Christmas Short Stack. And the winner is Pam Donaldson, 6215. Pam, send me an email at the address below, the Crafty Cat Stitcher address below. And I'll get this out to you. Now, I know I, I, it'll it come really close to Christmas, but hey, there's always next Christmas, right? And it's just a fun time of the year to work on things like this. So Pam Donaldson, congratulations. And thank you, everybody else who entered my giveaway. I am going to um, start giveaways back up after Christmas, at, at, probably with my next video. So this one I'm going to skip because it's just now we're getting into the real busy time and you know how that goes okay so um I had bought an advent calendar a stitchy advent calendar from and I have trouble with this name y-i-o-t-a apostrophe s y yodas 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 I don't know how to say it but I, I'll put the link below so that you can see um where I got this from, and I am so enjoying this, this uh, advent calendar. I started it promptly on the 1st, and I'm not going to show you every day, because this is day 11 uh, as I'm recording this. This is, um, by the way, it's December 11, 2023, and this is video number 89. I forgot to talk about that. That's okay. But, um, it was a nice plastic storage box with a bunch of little boxes like this in it. And every day you get to open one up. I mean, it's a little gift every day. That's number one. That was December 1st. I'm not going to show all of them um, because some of them are charts. And, um, and we don't want to show those. But there's some very cute little charts in there. I'm enjoying it. And there were also fabrics. There was a piece of Ada and a piece of even weave and so charts in the even weave I mean it's perfect for little ornaments and things like that nice little giveaways and things so um, on the third we got I got some tapis gold tapestry needles like I said it's so much fun to just get something a little tiny thing every day and I'm just having a lot of fun with it. Um, day number five was a little bag, and it had little embroidery scissors in it. So cute. And this little Santa Claus bag. So that was day five. See, as you can tell, I'm just really enjoying this immensely. And today, the 11th, is a little needle binder. And it's a little snowflake. Isn't that cute? I love it. Oh, so cute. So I will put the link below 
And um, if you're interested in doing this next year or interested in seeing all the other things that they have on their website, then you can do that. Okay. Um, I think that is going to be almost it. I covered all of my whips. Um, I did... <laughs> I am still going to go through with my um, um, Stitch from Stash in 2024. Um, I I think I bought two Christmas seasons. Here's the problem with Christmas stitching. It's so cute and it's hard not to want to stitch it. It's just... You know, it's like at certain times of the year, you just want to stitch some cute little Christmassy things. So I thought, okay, I did buy two. And I'll show those next time because I did not print them out. I bought them as PDFs. And um, they're really cute. So, um, but I'm still, I'm not, my plan, this, this is still my plan. No more charts as of the first of the year. And um, only certain things will be purchased um, and I'm going to stick with it because I have so much in the way of charts so what I can do is I can show you the ones that I think after Christmas I think first of the year I'm going to go through my charts and then have a video about what I plan to start and I think that because I'm not going to be buying I think I'm going to allow myself to do some extra starts which is always fun, right? So that's about it for that. Also, I wanted to thank you for all of your advice on stitch groups, um, booking a room around here is very difficult. I probably mentioned this last time, but I will once again. Um, I was told that the library system here, which is excellent, and we have four branches, and with the fifth being built in our little county. I mean, this county is not huge. It's a, it's a medium-sized county, and to have that many branches is amazing. Um, we are the busiest library system in the state, and when I was still working for them, there was one year that one of the branches had over a million checkouts. So that's the kind of system we have. It's very active. Um, a lot of active programs like children's programs and even adult programs in the um, library system. So they're the only place to book a meeting room that's free in our county. And I have not checked out restaurants or anything like that, but that just seems so, for us, maybe a little awkward um, for timing and things like that. So that's something if we want to do that later on, I want to start with something definite to get this process started. And I did book the room and it's, you can only do it within 60 days of the date. So I, I had to go online like on November 21st or 2nd or something like that and, and um, book it. And I got it. And um, so far, we have 14 definites and two maybes coming. And we now have in our group, it's, it's a 34-person group, which I never thought. So I'm just really happy that, um, that that's, you know, people have that interest. And I'm trying to keep our Facebook group kind of interesting. So I'm, I'm posting Friday, Friday freebies, and I'm posting stitch you know, post what you're working on and post your favorite Christmas finish and things like that. And, you know, it's kind of, I don't think a little bit starting to pick up, but um, I'm looking forward to it a lot. We're going to just stitch for three and a half hours in the afternoon on a Saturday in January. And um, that, I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And then we're just going to take it from there. And I think we might actually do different times and see if somebody wants to come on a weekday and see if maybe there's an evening time that we could stitch for a couple hours and 
get, you know, because I know there's people that work. And so um, it's going to be really interesting. It's already an interesting process for me because I've never done anything like this before. And um, it's going to be just fun to see um, who shows up and what we can, what kind of things we can do. And I just want to keep the first one very simple and, um, and go from there. So, but the funny thing is if we want to have one in February, then I got to start thinking of a date and figuring out when I've got to book it now. So, so I know. So, and, and so it's, it should work out. Okay. It should work out. So I'll keep you posted. Um, I'll probably see you before our meetup, but when we do have the meetup, I will definitely let you know what's going on with that. So, so anyway, um, this is probably the last, most like, uh, let's say this is the last time I'm going to see you before Christmas. I hope you have a very Merry Christmas. And, and if you're ha celebrating Hanukkah, I hope that you're having a good Hanukkah. And I hope that everybody's happy and joyous and kind to each other. And um, I will see you very soon. Thank you for joining me today. And I really hope that you saw something that you like. I hope you're enjoying your stitching and that you can get some fun stitching in during these busy holidays. And um, go ahead, please. I appreciate every single comment I get. And I hope that you'll comment and let me know if you like this video. And please consider subscribing if you haven't yet. That's it. That's all I've got today. So um, Merry Christmas and I will see you soon. Bye-bye.